Hi everybody, it's Kelly from Let's Get Clacking and today's video is part three of our silicone mold tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a 3D print, which you can see has already started in the background. And I'm going to be showing you how I make a mold from a 3D print, as well as to print the housings for the many molds that I have already made. So many of you may not have access to a 3D printer, so you could very well make use of a 3D printing service. If you're in South Africa, reach out to me. Let me know if you want something 3D printed as I do offer a 3D printing service as well. 3D printing is a relatively cheap thing to do. However, it's not very cheap to get started. As a 3D printer is quite expensive, it's not necessarily something that you would have as a toy. So the steps that we will be following in this tutorial is to print the item, which is currently printing, print the housing for the mold, as well as post-processing when it comes to 3D printing. This is also a very good indication of why these kinds of things, why these kinds of molds are quite expensive, as there's a lot of work involved in getting the print exactly where you need it to be. Many hours are spent sanding, varnishing, re-sanding, re-varnishing, you get the idea. <laughs> well, let's get clacking! I'm going to show you how to do this through Thingiverse, but, but there are many other sites that you can use. So I'm going to start with navigating to Thingiverse. What I'm going to make in this tutorial is a stamp handle. So I'm going to go search for stamp handle. And then it'll bring up all of the stamp handle files that it has available. Some of them will have actual pictures of makes of things that have been printed. They, the term that they use is makes. Um, and some of them just have the files that it looks like in the 3D rendering program. Um, so I'm actually going to go for this one. I like this one. Um, it's nice and simple and it's universal. You don't have to work like, for example, if you had to go for this type of a stamp handle, then you'd only be able to use stamps that size or that handle would only be that size. Um, so I prefer something relatively simple for this tutorial. So I'm going to navigate into the file. You can download it through here and um, you can collect it and add it to essentially your gallery um, or you can just download it. So this one doesn't have any comments, it doesn't have any makes or remixes and it's related to three different apps. So it doesn't actually have any other dimensions other than the size, any other information other than the size. So in terms of a file that you would want to use, it's maybe a little bit bare, um, but it looks relatively simple so we don't have to really worry about any other information. So I'm just going to download the STL file. And then I'm going to open it and it'll open in Cura. So that's just a, another design that I had open. So here it's opened in Cura. Cura is essentially the program that I use to create the G code, which is the code that the, the 3D printer uses to understand how to print, understand where the layers go. So a lot of these settings on the side, I mostly leave standard. Um, a couple of them I change depending on what it is I'm printing. As an example, the infill just means how much, how strong it is going to be on the inside. I don't need it to be particularly strong, so I'm going to maybe put it at 10%. Um, just taking it away from 5, because 5 might be a little bit low. Um, and then I'm going to leave it on super quality. I print most of my things on super quality just because I like having to do less post-processing. If I wanted to have a much quicker print, I could put it on low quality, um, standard and dynamic, so, you know, it's just the steps down. Um, I prefer super because, yeah, I don't print things just to see a prototype, I print things that I actually want to use. Um, so then you click slice, slice essentially just figures out um, how to cut the mold. So it's going to say, it says it's going to take one hour and 52 minutes to print. It'll use eight grams of filament or 2.76 meters. And then just out of interest, you can then go into the preview and you will see exactly what it looks like. So you can see it layer for layer, um, exactly, you know, 
what it looked like from the top. It looks quite funky. Um, and the lines at the bottom are essentially just to help it stick to the bed. These, these four lines over here. So what you do then is you can save it to file or you can save it to the memory card, which I don't have put in my print and my computer at the moment. So I'm just going to do that quickly. A few moments later. So you'll notice now that I have my SD card plugged into my computer. It now says save to removable drive. So I can literally just click save to removable drive. It'll save it. I can eject the drive and I'm ready to print. So I literally, I don't need to do any adjusting. I don't need to do any changes. It's simply just downloading the file putting into Cura, slicing it, and off you go. So I'm gonna start that print, and let's see how it goes. So because you guys are along for the ride for this one, um, I thought I'd bring you along for the whole journey. So showing you, you know, right up to how I start a print, so that you can see the kinds of things that are involved with this, even if you may never use it. So you put the SD card in, it's quiet, so it'll get loud in a second. I need to home the extruder just to make sure that I can balance the bed out properly. While it's busy um, warming up, I'm going to give the bed a quick clean with some kitchen towel and some rubbing alcohol. And she's in a little spray bottle. And I'm not going to throw that away because I reuse it many, many times um, before chucking it away because, you know, reuse. While I wait for the bed to heat up, I'm going to see if the extruder will heat up as well because I need to change the filament. Uh, well, not change the filament, but load the filament rather. Um, because it's snapped off. So the filament should be going from here into there, and there's a little hole. Um, but at some point it must have snapped off while I was moving something or something like that. On 58 degrees, 59, so it's almost at 60. And then it's going to swap over to heating up the extruder. You want to level everything while both the extruder and the bed is hot because I've seen it where I level everything and then I warm everything up and because everything was cold and now it's gotten warm, you know, warm means um, the expansion and contraction elements within the, within the printer change. So then where you had no gap, now you've got a big gap, which means that if you had to print, your prints would fail because they wouldn't stick to the bed. Luckily, the extruder is very small and it heats up very quickly. We're already on 120 degrees. Now, I technically don't need the extruder to heat up for this part, so I might just let it stop where it is now. I just need it to release the filament that's inside the extruder. As you can see, the extruder, the filament is coming in through here, but there's nothing coming out. Well, you can't really see that, but there's nothing coming out on this side. I mean, my hand's sitting flush. So what you need to do is you need to push that together to release the pressure on the filament push it forward slightly to get it release it within the, um, the extruder and this is the tricky part especially at this angle you need to pull it back so if I now show you from this side you can see that there's a tiny little bit of the extru of the filament coming out here so I need to push that part in and pull the filament out ah. and then it breaks of course Okay, so I need to repeat the process, maybe a little bit more. Now I'm just messing it up. There we go. Okay, so I'm holding the clamp open and we're to gen gently try and pull it out. It's not working. Very gently pull it out. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the filament has come out, as you can see. You can actually even see the indentation of the extruder, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so I found the edge of the filament and I need to cut it at a 45 degree angle to ensure that there's a little bit of a point that it can go through. Okay, so we push it through this piece. See that little blue light turns on because it's detected that there's now filament in it. And you've got to get the right angle or it's not cut 45 degree-ish enough. Sometimes you just got to get the right angle for it to go through. Then you need to push it into that little hole there. Okay, now here's where you need to keep the clip open so that it feeds through. And the second tricky part is to get it to go through there at the right angle. It's like you need three hands to do this. Okay, that's in. Now you just push the filament all the way in until you can't push it any further and you can feel the resistance. And that, folks, is a brief display of why I don't like changing filament. It's not always that much of a pain, but every now and then it's a bit of a pain. Next, we have to level the bed. Um, and we have to use extremely advanced equipment in order to do this. Extremely advanced, like most people can't afford it, advanced. A piece of paper. <laughs> so I like to turn my machine on and off just to release the steppers. And you can pull the bed forward. Now we've already given it a clean, but it doesn't have to clean it again. It just helps the plastic to stick to the glass if the glass is clean. If there's finger marks on there, then it won't stick to it properly. Okay. So we move the extruder over the bed. Try and put the piece of paper underneath. It can't go, so I need to bring the bed down slightly until the piece of paper will go underneath. Now it goes underneath the extruder. So now I need to raise the bed up so that the extruder essentially traps the piece of paper between the bed, but not hard. It just needs to just, just stop the paper from moving too much. Okay, we move to the other corner, same thing. Front corners. We'll find out in a minute or two if that's not level. Happens sometimes I level a bed three times before I can print something. So now I'm going to print from the card and it says stamp handle handle G code. So what it'll do now is obviously the bed um, the bed is dropped to a slightly lower temperature. So what it'll do is it'll now bring the bed back up to 60 degrees and it'll bring the extruder back up to 200 degrees and it will begin the print. Then I need to monitor it for the first three layers or so, which can take quite a while, especially after the first layer, because I need to make sure that it adheres to the bed. It has happened before that I started a print and I went to bed. I'll insert a picture here of what it looks like when I woke up in the morning. Thank you. 
And I'm also, I'm not worried about this amount of plastic being wasted because this is PLA plastic, which is polylactic acid plastic. So it's completely biodegradable, which is another reason why I was okay with getting a 3D printer. Um, because it's biodegradable, you don't have to worry about it damaging the environment too much. So to take you in for a closer look, you can see there how there's something that's lifted up, which means that the bed is not level properly, um, and it's not going to stick. So the first layer should not look like that. That looks like a hot mess. But it's nice to see if you go right in, you can see how the extruder is not actually lying on the bed. There's like a little bit of a gap. So everything's just kind of going all higgly piggly. So that means the bed's not level and it won't print properly. So we're gonna have to level it again. Yeah, so you see now how it's essentially moving the thingy around it didn't even stick to the bed so do it again now we'll start the print and I'm going to home the bed Taking the gunk off the nozzle. Disabling the steppers. Moving it forward. Good. See, paper can go right underneath it, right from where it goes, so it's clearly not level properly. Feels good. Okay, that was very far off, which I never understand. And now we start again. Obviously hoping that this doesn't happen again. Next up, we're starting with the housing for the handle that we've just made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Cura and I'm going to load the item that we just downloaded. So I'm just going to drop it into Cura. I'm going to check the dimensions. 
So what I want to check is I want to see the red side because I want to see the diameter essentially of the scent of the this item. I can measure this. I mean, obviously I've I've now printed it, so I can measure it on my mat. And um, if I measure it on my mat, it's about three and a half centimeters, and there the x-axis is three point essentially three point five. So that's good enough. I'm happy with that. At least then I know well the minimum width that the the housing needs to be. Generally, you need about half a centimeter clearance on the on either side to be comfortable. Um, you can go with less, but why? Um, and then the height of the model is the blue part, which is then six centimeters, just over six centimeters. Okay. So what we need to do is I need to. Well, I, I honestly. I know that there are better ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. Um, it's how I'm used to creating designs, so it's it's easier for me. Okay, so I draw a circle, and then I take the circle, and obviously that's showing me the radius, so I don't need the radius to be that. I'm gonna make it a com convert to part, because I don't like working with those circles. This will now be just the outside of this circle. So that was 3.5. So we need to make sure that it's at least 4.5. Um, so this circle then I will make 4.5. Uh, let's actually just change it here. Let's lock those parameters. 4.5. Oh, it helps if my num lock is on. 4.5. With a circle it's a little bit more straightforward. Typically what I do for this is I use the outline over here, the offset, sorry, and I do an offset of 0.2 centimeters because that's just the thickness that it needs to be. Obviously with a circle, it doesn't really matter. You can just use a normal, another circle, but the offset works. So then I um, make a compound path because I want it to be a solid object. I add a color so that it's just like that. Um, I center it to page, but that's just because I'm, you know, slightly type A, um, and then I save it. So I'm going to save this under my 3D print folder, and I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call it Stamp Handle. Copy that, because I'm going to use that a few times. Okay. So let's go down to Stamp Handle. Let's make that Stamp Handle. Okay, and then I'm going to save it again as an SVG. And I'm going to go back to Chrome and I'm going to go into Tinkercad. Tinkercad is the program that I like to use to create all of these designs. As you can see, I've made many of them in the past. Um, so I create new one. I'm going to import my SVG. You can drag and drop it there, but I don't have it open, so it's fine. Um, 3D print, let's go to stamp handle, import the SVG, import, and it'll load the circle in the inside. Now, the reason why we took the parameters of the height for this object um, is because we need to know how high to push the object up. So that was 6.5. Now we need to think about a few millimeters below it for when it sinks into the clay. So I normally add about two or three millimeters on for that. And then the clearance that we want at the top. We can add another five millimeters on for that. So if we wanted to add on eight, we can add on eight, we can make it seven millimeters, or we can make it 6.8 if we want it to be a little bit more specific. So let's go up here and make it 68. So 68 is then 68 millimeters essentially. So that's exa exactly what we want. Um, so then we can we have our design. Um, I'm going to change the name. So I'm going to change the stamp handle, um, housing, uh, just because I like to be specific. And then we export it into the STL. Uh, we go into Cura. You have to delete that one. And then let's go to 3D print, new stamp handle. Oh, it'll still be in the downloads, actually. Just gonna take 
both of them, put them there. And now we've got the stamp handle housing. So I'm going to pop that in there. And there we have it. So now we can slice this and put it into and save it on the external drive, which I need to plug into my computer again. <laughs> A few moments later. My SD card has now been plugged in and I can save it to the removable hard drive. If I wanted to change the density of this one, then I could. I normally do these on about a 20% infill, just because I need the external parts to be a little bit stronger. I don't want them to break when I'm pushing the mold out. So let's see what the slicing was on 20. Almost no difference, so I'm going to make sure that I add it as a 20% infill just to be a little bit stronger. Save it to the removable hard drive and then eject the drive. And let's go and plug it into the printer and set it to print. <laughs> this will print overnight, which is nice. So when I wake up in the morning, it'll all be done. So now we move outside and I've got some 180 grit, some 180 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand it down. Now I'm going to go in with some 800. It is now beautifully smooth. I'm sure you can see. Maybe not so much because the light is not all that great. to turn the light on you can see it's quite smooth we don't need it to be crystal smooth um, but it's good enough to varnish to spray beautiful okay so I'm outside in my garden and I've got some triple thick glaze that I'm going to use and I have a box that is lined with paper, newspaper. So I'm going to take the part that we just sanded, place it in the middle of the box. You probably should do this on a level surface but we don't have an outside table so you've got to work with what you have. You should also be wearing gloves. Open the can, give it a Good shake and then spray the object. You want to try and get it from all angles so that you get everything covered. This works a little bit more tricky with. 3D objects. Gotta make sure that you get underneath as well. But this seems to be okay. So I'm going to leave it here to dry. One eternity later. The piece that we wanted to mold is now dry. Um, I gave it quite a few coats of spray just to make sure that we had covered all the bits that may not look very nice. We can see now it's quite smooth and shiny. 
because it's a transparent filament that I use to print it, it does make it a little bit harder to pick up on the details on the to see if it is actually smooth or not. But I suppose we'll see that from the first resin cast anyway. And again, we're making handmade items. We're not making something out of a factory. So it's going to have some imperfections. Like there was a bit of a bubble at the top here. I'm not sure if you can see that. You can feel it, but you can't really see it on the, on the item. But it's not gonna have too much of an effect on the, on the mold, so that's okay. What I did as well, you'll see this little disc. I actually, I've actually just taken this off the build plate and it's a piece of filament that was stuck to the edge. I'm actually testing something out, something new in this video. So it's going to be quite interesting to see if it works. Essentially what I want to do is I want to glue the piece to the base to make sure that there's no, you know, edges, no, that we get nice clean edges on the top of the mold. And then what I want to do is I want to put that as use that as a base instead of the polymer clay or the you know just the normal clay that I used in the previous videos. Which if you missed, I'm gonna link up at the top so that you can take a look at the beginner's video and the intermediate video on mold making. So it's essentially gonna look like that when it's in the casting and when it's when it's all set up. Um so what I want to do is I want to just Give this little light sand um, because some of the newspaper got stuck to the bottom when I kept picking it up and <laughs> checking to see if it is dried yet and then you know you put it back down and then it, it you know gets stuck so true to form while I'm trying while I'm trying to form a do you mind while I'm trying to film a YouTube video I hear this in the background A few moments later. So it goes in there like that. The sandpaper is now on flat. And we can... It's actually the first time I'm using this. Oh, what a dream. Now you know that you're getting nice flat, straight edges. As opposed to if you're sanding it by hand, then you're going to have slightly rounded edges because your hand naturally does that. <coughs> Beautiful. <laughs> 10 points if you know where that's from. Let me know in the comments. Now that I've filed that down a little bit, I'm going to glue it to this piece. You're going to need to be careful if you're, if you're doing this as well or if you're just along for the ride um, and the lols. Then you won't need to be careful, but I need to be careful that the glue doesn't seep out on the edges. Because if it seeps out on the edges, that means that we're not going to have a nice edge to our mold. And when we cast it, we will see that edge. trick to this stuff is don't overuse. Don't just stick it. Bah, stick it. I'm just going to wiggle it around a little bit. Might not even be perfectly in the middle, but that's okay. Again, handmade. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. Okay, I can see a little bit of it coming out on the edges there. See if there's any open there. I want to let that dry for a bit as well. Normally sets quite quickly, so we won't have to wait too long. But I might give it about half an hour or so. We can also see how wide the edge of the mold is going to be, and then that'll go on top of it, like that. It should. It's going to be a very tight fit. Uh, which is what I want because I want it to kind of be um, watertight. Probably won't be. Okay, so let's come back in about half an hour and see if it's dried. 
So it's been about 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm just going to carry on with this because obviously it's going to take us a while to mix the silicone and to get everything set up. So I don't want to wait too long. As I mentioned earlier, the plan is essentially to have this locked in like that. Um, might be a challenge because <laughs> obviously this lies perfectly like that. And it flips in. Just going to use some nail tools to try and get it level on the ground. Also then potentially what I've learned from this is that the outside needs to be more than one millimeter smaller than the inner side of the circle. So it's something that I'll learn for next time. This is a method that I want to be testing out so that I don't have to keep reusing the clay every time, um, especially when it comes to bulk making molds. Um, I don't want this all stuck together because then it's going to be a nightmare to get the, the, the silicone out. But I do want it to be able to clip together easily. Um, so I think that this is the best, the best way to do it. Okay, so if we just work our way around the circle like that, that actually seems to, it's actually perfect. It's probably even watertight as well. We may get some leakage, but we can avoid that by actually using some clay under the bottom. And I know that that's kind of half defeats the purpose, um, but let's have the clay ready so that when we pour the silicone in, we don't have to worry about um, rushing to get everything ready so that you don't lose too much silicone. I've done the calculations. I'm gonna go for 60 mils of silicone. So I'll be able to use my cup um, because it's just enough. For this mold, I'm actually going to be using a different silicone. So I've got two different kinds. The one is Mold Star 30 and I've got Mold Star 15. Mold Star 15 is the lighter silicone um, and it has a higher tear strength. Now, the reason why I'm going for Mold Star 15 for this mold is because when we pull this piece out, now obviously the inside of the stamp handle is slightly thinner than the top part. So we're going to need A, a little bit more flexibility in the mold, and B, we need to make sure that it's not going to tear. So the reason why there are different kinds of silicones is exactly for this reason. I like using Mold Star 30 for these kinds of molds because it provides an additional, a little bit of extra strength. And with these kinds of open back molds like this, you don't need to have a higher tear strength because you're not going to tear anything in this mold. You're literally just going to pop the, the item out and then you're done. But with items like this where you're going to be wiggling a little bit, there's going to be a little bit of tearing, you might even need to cut a seam down the side to get the item out if you're not able to actually pull it out when it's casted. You're going to need those properties in order to have your mold successful. So that's why I've chosen the Mold Star 15. As always, start off with a bit of stirring. That's 60 moles. <clears throat> it's also nice to be able to use the unused silicone um, because unused silicone or unmixed silicone rather does not keep forever on the shelf. You've probably got a up to a, I hesitate to even say one year shelf life. Um, they say use it as fast as you can. I'm not 100% sure on what the shelf life of unmixed silicone is, but don't rely on it keeping for it. You don't have to use it within like 24 hours or something stupid like that, but um, don't rely on it staying like that for ever. 
So essentially buy what you need, buy what you're gonna use. Um, don't buy more than that. I may have overestimated the volume of the stamp handle, but that's fine. I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. You just need to mix another 20 moles or so. I am going to use a different cup though because I don't want I don't want it to compromise the volumes. Mixing time again. Okay, boring time. Sure, you guys saw that before I did. And I'm sure you guys, like me, are hoping that it's not leaking. There's a little bit. But it's not the end, I think it's mostly just me that mixed. You guys are probably watching me do it, going, No, Kelly! No! <laughs> So now, we let that cure overnight. Moldstar 15 only needs 4 hours to cure, as opposed to Moldstar 30, which needs 6 hours. So we've got a little more leeway. However, it is 11.30 in the evening for me. Um, so I'm not going to be waking up at 3.30 in the morning <laughs> to check on this. I will do so tomorrow morning. Um, as I normally do, I normally pour my molds just before I go to sleep. Um, give them more than enough time to cure. I mean, I'm not in a hurry. So I just let them cure by themselves in their own time. What I do want to do with this one again is I want to do what I did earlier and swipe the top. Okay, so there's a tiny bit of leftover silicone. I'm talking maybe three moles. I'm happy with that. Um, I think that's as close as you're going to get. These things are never an exact science. Um, so I'm happy with that amount of leftovers. And we will see if my plan worked in the morning. I'm going to stay here for a while just to monitor it. Um, to see that it doesn't leak. Because that would be disastrous. If you come back in the morning and there's silicone all over the desk. Generally when I'm doing these kinds of things I put it in a bucket. So that if it does leak, it just leaks into the bucket. And that's not actually... I mean yes, it's a bit of a waste because you now waste all the silicone. But you haven't gotten it all over the desk, all over the floor, all over everything. Although... Silicone is easy to just peel up, unless you have silicone items lying around. I will just keep an eye on this for the next few hours. I can even pick it up and go and put it somewhere if I wanted to. Clean the bottom there. Um, tap it a little bit to try and get some of the bubbles out. Again, this is a platinum cure silicone. This particular silicone doesn't need degassing. You can degas it if you want. You don't need to. Um, it would get rid of all of those kinds of marks, so it's probably better to degas it, like I said in my previous video, but it's not necessary. Okay, see you tomorrow morning. Early the next morning. Right, it's now the next morning, and I'm so thrilled to see that it hasn't leaked out at all. Um, there's a tiny little bit of leakage, but nothing major. Um, the mold is now sitting nice and flat at the bottom, which is very exciting. So let's see if we can try and demold this. 
That's what I love about silicone. Cleanup is a breeze. Okay, looks good on that side. Looks very good. So now essentially what we want to do, theoretically, is just pop it out. Um, I know that's going to be far easier said than done, but let's see. Create some air in the side. <coughs> Try something thinner, like a popsicle stick. Okay, we have some movement. I've got to pull it right close to my body so that I can get the right force, but it seems like that is the way to go with these molds. There we go. Popped out a little bit. Okay. So that also came off, which is not the end of the world. At least now we can <coughs> get it out of the mold, create some air. I actually just want to take the glue off there. It's a very strong smell first thing in the morning. Okay, so what I'm now doing is I'm just putting my sharp pointy thing around the edge. <coughs> just to release the suction a little bit so that I can come out a little bit easier potentially. With shorter, flatter objects, this will obviously be a lot easier. The tall, cylindrical ones like the one we have now, um, obviously I'll... obviously going to be a lot trickier. Let's see if we can push it out like that. It's slowly coming out, so there is hope. It's just a bit of a struggle. <laughs> This is where having long nails does not help because I'm trying to get my fingers in there, but not quite working. And I'm, I'm aware that you probably can't see a lot of this because I'm having to do it so close to my body. Um, so it's not within the filming area. So I apologize. <laughs> but it's literally just me doing that, but here closer to my body because I've got more strength. See, it's slowly coming out. Just pressing it around like that, little bits, little bits. Once it's out enough, I can actually pull it, but there's not enough for me to get a grip there yet, so I can't, I can't do that yet. In a case like this, I think what would be better is to have two halves that you then clip together and hold together with. Um, Elastic. I know that's what they do for two-part molds, so for the housing that might be a better way to go about it um, because this is not ideal, especially if you need to make a few of them um, to sit here for half an hour trying to wiggle this thing out. Whoop. There we go! Yay! Perfect. Okay, so obviously that was a bit of a, bit of a struggle, but we got there. Um, and the bottom of this is beautifully flat. The top is then just not flat, but that's fine because we'll just use our cuticle trimmer to trim the edges. Obviously with it not being airtight and sealed and things like that on the bottom, you're obviously going to have a less than perfect edge at the top. Um, but it's it still looks very good. Now we're going to see if we need to cut a, a thing down the side or if we will be okay. 
we'll get away with just pulling it out and having a slightly difficult demold. Sure, my hands are going to need a massage after this or a, a soak or something. <laughs> I don't think we're going to win with that. And rather than push the matter, I'd rather just use my craft knife to cut um, a, a, a peel mark down the side. So essentially what that means is I'm going to not cut a straight line because when you cut a straight line, it may look better on the casting, but what it does is it doesn't allow the edges to meet up as perfectly. So if you cut a slightly jagged line down the side, a peel line or a join line, I'm not sure what the technical term is, um, then it allows the mold to snap back in exactly where it's supposed to be and it, better, it creates a better seal. So you have a, low, a lower chance of there being a join line on the actual molded item. So you go like a jagged one like that, and then you go back that like that I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom and I just want to make sure that I've cut all the way through Let's go a tiny bit further. Perfect. So you can see the join line very clearly there, but when it's together, I mean, I'm literally, I'm not even putting any pressure on that. And you see how it's, you cannot see the join line. You can obviously only see it when it's up super close like this, um, but otherwise you won't be able to see the join line. And we have our perfect casting. Join line over there, so you see it goes all the way down to that part there. Beautiful, beautiful mold. And that's the mold, which is a lot of fun. A great learning experience for me too. Thank you so much for coming along this super long journey with me. We finally have our molded pieces and we can start casting resin in them. So that's, or whatever else, other products you want to use. I'd just like to send a quick shout out to some of the friends of mine that have been helping me throughout my, my journey in 3D printing. Um, we have a WhatsApp group called 3D Noobs Helping Noobs, where every time I have a problem, I you know send a picture or a description and they help me and it's really really amazing that there are people out there like that that literally help you for absolutely no reason they're not getting anything out of it they're just doing it because they know how frustrating it can be when you have prints that don't adhere to the bed or something like that and you know me being relatively new to 3d printing there have been a lot of problems that I've encountered and they have an answer within a minute, which is incredible, especially when you're about to throw the printer across the room because it's not working and you've tried everything. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can experience it or understand the frustration with any kind of craft. It's not doing what you want it to do and all you want to do is get it working and you're in a hurry and blah. So yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You guys have really made my life a lot easier um, and really helped me learn a lot faster so that I can do things like this and create YouTube videos out of them. So I really appreciate it. And also I just want to say that I'm obviously not a 3D printing expert at this point. Um, I know how to do very basic things like creating the housing for this mold. I mean, it may seem very impressive to some of you, but it's very, very basic, very elementary. There may be things that I got wrong in this video. I apologize in advance. Um, please don't take my word as gospel. It is just my experience, my learnings, things that I've picked up along the way. So please take everything like that with a pinch of salt. Thank you very much for watching my tutorial. I hope that you found it interesting. Um, 3D printing has completely opened an entire new world into mold making because the options really are endless. If you can think it, if you can design it, then you can create it, which is really great when it comes to 3D printing. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my upcoming videos, so we're almost in October, coming up to Christmas season, so there's going to be lots of ideas of nice gifts that you can make for your family. It's been a rough year. 2020 has been crazy. Um, just today, there was an earthquake in my city, um, which is quite ridiculous because I live in South Africa, in Cape Town. The last earthquake we had was in 1969. So, you know, you kind of expected a 2020, but, you know. So this year has been rough. I think that everybody needs a little bit of a creative break. Um, also, we also need ideas of relatively cheap Christmas gifts to make, some meaningful things. Um, I've got lots of fun things that I did last year for Christmas that I'm going to be doing tutorials on again. Um, because they were a huge hit with my family um, and I'm definitely going to be making them again for my family so I'll bring you guys along for the ride early enough so that you guys can prepare them as well. If you have any ideas or videos that you would like me to cover please leave a message in the comments so that I can investigate and bring you along for the ride as well. On this side you'll be able to subscribe to my channel and on the top you will see my latest video release just below it you'll see a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. Thanks for joining me guys and please be kind to someone today. Cheers!